Okay, I believe we're ready to get started. So I'm going to open up the Finance Committee. The first item on the agenda is a resolution for a design build contract for the Mill Street Park and Colby Fulford, Chief of Staff, will present this to us. Thank you. Um, as most of y'all are aware, whenever we decided to build the municipal complex, part of the arrangement whenever we entered into the Design Excellence Grant funding uh, was that we had to have a certain amount of green space. Um, we're still going back to find out exactly what that number is, but across the street, we were going to designate that as a park or green space uh, so that we can stay compliant. We've held off doing that until we finish this building. The, whenever we did the Design Excellence Grant with the Walton Family Foundation, there had to be a certain amount of green space involved. So that's why we purchased that property across the street. Um, once Milestone finished this project, we asked them to work on completing that park across the street. Uh, we think a design build is the appropriate way to go uh, on that park. Duval Decker had given us, given us some conceptual designs for that. Um, and so in the design build contract agreement, we hire Milestone to go in and work with the designers and a local engineering firm, um, which is ESI. And so we just pay them directly for that. So we think that's the best avenue to approach this and it should take uh, about six months to complete. The what amount, was the original um, for the Design Excellence Grant, the original amount? I believe that was a $2 million grant. If I remember. Uh, actually, it was about 3.4, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was the design-build design agreement? What, what's their role so in that? In the design-build, that is where the construction company works with the designers and the architects. Uh, instead of us going out and hiring a separate architect firm, to do the design and then we bring that back to the construction company. We're going through them since they've been working on this project. They hire them themselves and they work together with them. On this building, there were several occasions where we would need to work with either the construction company or the architect and sometimes those wires would get crossed. So it's easier for us to go through one point. Uh, so what they do is they, they show the estimates in the contract that's been provided in the packet of what uh, Duval Decker would charge. Uh, it's already factored into the price, the $880,000. So they, it, it's kind of like construction management. They will go find the bids and get us a GMP on that. So what they're doing is they're hiring the architectural firm and the engineering firm, and we just go through one point person. This is, this is also a much simpler project. I mean, yeah. it's going to be a green space with, sure. yeah. So it just seemed like the the most economical. Is there is way. there like a plan that somebody gives to them? It's or in your theme. You you have a drawing, mm -hmm. but it's uh, drew that. the uh, architect Duval I, Decker. Duval Decker drew that, and that was their off of their preliminary. They've been through several iterations. The first one was much more, a lot more to it, a lot more cost. We just wanted green space. I mean, it's going to be grass and it's going to be irrigated with nice fescue and some trees. And then the only, the more, most complicated portion of this is the added parking that we're putting in just north of the existing parking. That's part of what Duval Decker brings to the table. The yep. easiest way for me to say it, this is just my saying, is you get one throat to choke at the end of the day. So uh, we can call Milestone instead of having to call a different, an engineer and an architect, it gives us one point of contact. This has really worked out great. I mean, you know, we, we bought the properties knowing those, that those buildings and those houses were eventually going to be raised. But it enabled us, when we sold the, uh, uh, the old building inspection, and they had to get out, and, and it gave them all a place to go and work out of, too, while we knew we were waiting on getting. But now, we really don't need the buildings anymore, and we're ready to move forward with the park. Make a motion to forward the resolution to council with recommendation of approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to forward this resolution to council with recommendation for approval. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Can we, hey, guys, can we back up and do that again? 
So all those in favor, please push the green plus sign. I think all you have to say is we're ready to vote. Okay. And then they can push either button they want. Okay. Third time's the charm. We're ready to vote. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the screen. We're waiting on one of our council members. There you go. So you do have an abstain option there, too. If they show six, one, and one. Okay. Yeah, it says it's color coded on your screen. Okay. So it passed. Okay, so we can move on to item number two on the agenda is a resolution um, entering uh, the city entering into a lease agreement with. Uh, Perks and Recreation Disc Golf LLC, and this will be presented by Ernest Kate, City Attorney. Thank you. Since 2018, we have been renting the property at 2315 Lewis to Dynamic Discs, which is a disc golf uh, company at JB Hunt Park, and we have been approached about um, a new tenant. Uh, they're not here tonight, but it's Perks and Recreation. And the agreement would be that they would pay the same amount that Dynamic Discs was paying, which was $800 a month. And then starting in January of 2025, it would go up to $900 a month. Uh, a copy of the proposed lease is in your packet, and it's the same as the, the existing lease. I will say I was contacted by a representative for Perks and Recreation. They are interested into... Uh, turning this into a five-year lease instead of a one-year lease with a month-to-month -month thereafter. And I told them I would bring that to your attention. They made me aware of that after the agenda had gone out on Friday. Matt is, are you here, Matt? I don't see. He's not here. He told me he'd be here, but let's see how the year goes. This would be from, it would start April 1st through the end of March of 2020. Five, but the rent would go up to 900 a month beginning January 1st of 2025 is the proposal. Every, all the other terms remain the same as the current tenant. Did you hear the question, Chad? Yeah, push the button. What happened to the current tenant? He's still going to work for that company. Uh, he wanted to get away from the day-to-day -day operations and he travels around a lot and but he found this company and they're uh, very reputable and I know in central Arkansas so this this one's just for one year though right yep that's correct I moved to forward this resolution to council with a recommendation of approval. Second. So I did have a question. You were talking about extending it to five years. Would we have a chance to talk and discuss before we agree to that, or would it go at the same price? The, the one that's being forwarded would be just for a year, and we gives us a year to figure out what we're going to do after that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to forward this resolution to council with recommendation for approval. You may vote. Okay, we get. They'll, if people see it, but either you or, like at council, Ernest at this point would say that past eight, eight to zero. Okay, item number three is a resolution, and it's a transfer of property to the City of Springdale from the Water and Sewer Commission, and this is presented by Ernest Kate, City Attorney. Thank you. Uh, if you'll recall, Council, uh, 
when Bethel Heights existed, they had two different pieces of property they were using as, uh, what's the right term, Rick? Wastewater treatment facilities. And the northern uh, of the two properties are, the northern, the northern of the two properties is across the street from the old Bethel Heights City Hall. Springdale Water Department has remediated that entire site. And there is a, uh, in your packet, there is a uh, diagram. It's on red page 58. We have carved out a almost three quarter acre tract where the old uh, storage building was that was used in uh, connection with the, the wastewater treatment facility. And the, the proposal is to transfer that new parcel to Springdale Water and the consideration would consist of the cost that they incurred in remediating that site. Did I state that correctly? So the resolution would be to authorize the transfer of that 0.71 acre tract of property from the city of Springdale to Springdale Water Sewer Commission. We've essentially been using that property to store equipment, parts that were used for the maintenance of the old Bethel Heights system. So we have equipment and uh, inventory in that building. So rents do? Pardon me, sir? Rents do from you? <laughs> I think I think the mayor might have mentioned this at the last meeting that there's a house on the northwest corner of this parcel. It's a corner of uh, Apple Blossom and Lincoln that I believe uh, you all had been renting, but now yeah, it's empty and we're going to be probably raising gone. that structure. Right. Mercy was running an ambulance out of there for a while, but they no longer serve Benton County. So, so we don't see any need for this. Well, we're going to retain the, the 10.21 acres, uh, and we're only transferring the, the parcel that's 0.71 acres to spring no water. But the city would still retain the 10-acre parcel. Thank you. There's a building on the 0.71 that they've been using? Yes, sir. It's a, like I said, it's a metal building. It's got a garage door. And the old uh, uh, control center, if you will, for the treatment facility was in that building at the time. And I'm sorry, the building on the uh, north end? That, that didn't have anything to do with Springdale Water. That, was, that just recently became empty. Raising it? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to raise it. It's a it's an older house. That so really, that doesn't have anything to do no, with this transfer? No, it doesn't have anything to do with this. And is this 10 acres? Is that what the the water department uh, remediated or what, whatever the term was? Yes, sir. There was a subsurface disposal system that was on that property. The small diameter tubing still lays underneath the sod, but all the treatment works, the tankage, the pumping, all the electrical components, they've all been either removed or crushed and backfilled. So what's the status of the 10 acres now? Is all that work complete and it's like good to go or? It's good to go. It's complete. I'll move the resolution forward to recommendation for approval. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward the resolution to uh, council with recommendation for approval. You may now vote. All votes are in and it is 8-0. Yes. Okay, moving on to item number five. This is authorizing the mayor and city clerk um, to enter into a contract with the Illinois River Watershed Partnership. And this is for the establishment for Spring Creek Tributary Vegetative Buffer um, in J.B. Hunt Park. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I got the I wrong, wrong one here. Floor. Sorry. Contract with Illinois Watershed Partnership for establishment of Spring Creek Vegetative Buffer in downtown Springdale. This is presented by Ben Peters, engineering director. Yes, thank you. So <clears throat> really all three of the next items kind of go together. They're all agreements with the Illinois River Watershed Partnership to do different things. The first one, which is the one we're talking about now, is, is item four. That is to do stream bank restoration 
from essentially McCullough Drive or where Dean's Trail turns and goes south, east of the rodeo grounds, to the airport, and then from the west side of the airport to Meadow Avenue. And they'll take out all the invasive species, plant new trees, plant new native bushes, and stabilize that stream bank for that entire stretch. It's a 75-25 grant. So our WP is paying 75% of the bill. We're, we'd be required to pay 25%. The bill to do the restoration. So it's 20, what, what is our share? 23,000. Find it real quick. Yeah, 25399 for the first section, the one I've just talked about. That's our 25% share. And that includes a one-year maintenance agreement for them to take care of the, what they've done and make sure that the plantings take, and then we'll need to start taking it over after that. Can you explain the importance of this buffer? Sure. You know, as you urbanize an area and you have increased stormwater runoff, um, particularly in the time before we we're doing detention where we were just improving streams down, downstream and as long as it didn't flood someone, it was fine. So we've increased the amount of water that flows through these streams and the streams are they're adjusting themselves to try and convey that new volume of water. So we, what we have is incised banks that are nearly vertical or close to vertical that are gonna continue to erode and then that puts suspended solids in the stream and causes other problems downstream. So this is a way of trying to re-naturalize that stream and, and make it part of the solution to water quality instead of part of the problem. Thank you. Any other action on, uh, or any action on item number four? I'll move to forward the resolution and council with a recommendation of approval. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to forward item number four resolution to council with recommendation for approval. You may vote. Votes are in. It was eight zero for yes. Item number five is a resolution similar to item number four, but we're talking about the Spring, Spring Creek tributary vegetative buffer in J.B. Hunt Park. Yep, so everything I said about the last one applies to this one. The difference is the location. So this will be at J.B. Hunt Park, adjacent to Silent Grove Road. If you've ever driven down Silent Grove Road, you see that creek that's there and it has vertical sidewalls. So that area and then a little perimeter between that and the road will be planted in more native plantings. So that'll stop being a mobile area and will start being a place for bugs and bunnies and, and different things to live. And that comes at a, it's a 75-25 match with uh, our cost being 24669 That was originally, I guess it was called Dancing Rabbit Creek, which runs in front of Rabbit Foot Lodge, but it basically just looks like a ditch now. But, yeah, so that, we, that, that's the unofficial name. It's we still pretty that up. It, it, yeah. Spring Creek, but yeah. yeah, okay. How often is there water in there? Every time it rains. Yeah, it, it, it's a wet weather stream only. It dries up during dry time. Ben, I had to step out. Did you talk about uh, maintaining this? How long uh, will they have maintenance on this? Under this agreement, they'll maintain it for one year, and then we would take over maintenance after that. Um, it's, we think after one year, most of the plants will be established. It shouldn't be much in the way of work after that, other than to uh, go in and take out invasive species for the next three to five years, make sure they don't get another foothold. Move the resolution before recommendation for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward this resolution to council with recommendation for approval. You may vote. All votes are in and it is 8-0 yes vote. Item six is a resolution, same thing, except for this is for detention pond retrofit in Apple Orchard subdivision. Yeah, so this is somewhat related in that it is related to stormwater quality. Um, what, what this is is a 50-50 share grant 
um, from Illinois River Watershed Partnership. We would like to take one detention pond in town that's visible close to um, the street where we can monitor it and keep an eye on it and treat it a little differently than what we've done all the others. So right now, if you do a detention pond in a residential subdivision, the city takes over maintenance of that and mows it throughout the summer. And what we're trying to do is plant it with native plantings that don't need to be mowed but once a year and uh, hopefully improve the stormwater quality by keeping the first flush of water in the detention pond, letting it soak in and be used by those plants. So this is kind of a demonstration project. If this goes well and looks good, we'll probably change our ordinance and say, instead of sodding all the detention ponds, we wanna do this as a treatment instead, so. Which long-term could be a huge savings for us. Huge savings. And this is a value of $22,030 out of the city's coffers. I move to for the resolution to cancel with the recommendation of approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to forward the resolution to council with recommendation for approval. And you may vote. Vote passes 8-0, yes. Item number seven is a resolution, and this is for a gas line relocation with Black Hills Energy on 40th Street. And this is presented by Ryan Carr, Engineering Department. Good evening. In conjunction with our 40th Street project, uh, Black Hills Energy has relocated their lines and including about 3,100 feet of PE pipe installation, 1,000 feet of high pressure distribution steel and 450 feet of high pressure transmission steel lines. This work has been complete and uh, since utility relocations are a normal part of all of our bond projects, we were expecting this invoice to come in. This resolution- It's just a little higher than we were expecting. A little bit higher, yeah. yes. <laughs> This resolution is to approve uh, their invoice for $931,000 from the 2018 Street Bond Fund, and uh, I'm available to answer any questions. What's the remaining balance in the bond fund after this? After this, we have about $7 million remaining, and we're running pretty even with uh, the rest of our projects. It really depends on where Watkins Avenue comes in for its bid. But is that the last, that's the last 2018 project, is Watkins? Yes that we haven't, okay. Mm -hmm. And how much over was this project from the original estimate or? Um, this uh, Black Hills work, it's about double. Thank you. Was there some explanation for that? Uh, increase of costs over the years. The original estimate we received was uh, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yes, for the work. Move resolution pass, recommend for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward this. We have a motion and a second to forward this resolution to council with recommendation for approval. You may vote. Resolution passes with seven yeses and one no. Final item under finance committee is item number eight, authorizing the execution of professional services agreement. And this is for testing service, services on Kendrick Avenue improvements. Again, presented by Ryan Carr, engineering department. Yes, for the Kendrick Avenue improvements job, uh, GTS was selected as the most qualified materials testing firm for this project. Uh, testing services would include earthwork testing, concrete testing, and asphalt testing also to be paid from the 2018 bond fund. I'll move the resolution forward to recommendation for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward the resolution to council with recommendation for approval. You may vote. Hey, Ryan, while you're up there, uh, 40th Street, do we know when that uh, looks like it's going to get paved? It we have uh, asphalt binder coming in by the end of the month with the project expected to be complete by summer. Mm -hmm. and, 
And do we have any new estimates on how much that's going to cost? The street project? We're yes. running about, with change orders included, it's about $200,000 over the amount, and I believe that's close to about $8 million for the whole street project. Thanks. Thank you. The resolution passed 8-0, and that closes Finance Committee. All right, I'm going to open up the Police and Fire Committee. We have one item before us this evening. Um, as all mechanical equipment does, it tends to break down after a period of time, so we're needing uh, some new air conditioners at uh, Station 1 and Chiefs here to uh, answer any questions you have and tell us what's going on here. Yeah, I appreciate it. I Felt like this one warranted a little explanation. Uh, it, it did for me. This was a new, uh, a new venture for me is buying capital HVAC equipment uh, for an existing facility. And so I reached out to the state procurement office to make sure we were doing it correctly. Uh, for the HVAC equipment, the state contracts are awarded within a price range uh, for service. And so uh, there are only two state awarded contracts. Um, Johnson Controls and Dakin, and so we solicited a third quote just to make sure we were getting the best price we could. Uh, at the end of the day, the Dakin, who is uh, represented in Springdale as Sturdivant's HVAC, was the uh, lowest amount. It's within the contract awarded price uh, and was the lowest price we received, so that's what we're requesting the amount is to... Uh, select Sturdivant's to do the project, is to replace two rooftop HVAC units at Station 1 uh, that are both 24 years old. They're, they don't make parts for them anymore. They're not supported. And so um, every year we've had to do significant work on them. This year, when they become stressed uh, in the summer, there's no parts or service available for those units, so they will need to be replaced. Move the resolution be forwarded to Council for recommendation for approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to forward this recommendation for approval. You can vote. <laughs> Resolution will be forwarded, and I will close out the Fire and Police Committee. Thank you. I'd like to open up the Community Block Grant Committee meeting. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Dean in a second, but... Um, when I took us over a year ago, we met and we discussed a lot of the criteria what uh, what needs to be done and uh, to help some of these nonprofits. And we have did the gambit. We have returning home. We have uh, uh, the veterans. We we have the Compassion House that keeps you know that um, it, the ladies the young ladies choose to have their babies. And we think we've covered a lot of ter territory. So, and Dean's did an outstanding job. So, Dean, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good afternoon. Um, the next slides are going to show the nonprofits that took the, took the time to fill out the applications. So, each of them are going to come up and discuss their organization. So, first of all, we have BTX Force with James. Can I ask you a question yeah. first? Yeah. You're getting you're getting ready to go through this whole list of nonprofits, correct? Are these just what's the list? Is this list of people that have made requests? No. Yes. So no. yes, no this yes. Is yes. So between January first and February first, anyone that's that's on this list has been approved by having a five hundred one c three and been vetted by me and by Sam's to make sure that they are qualified. Correct. So we've we have eleven nonprofits that has asked for money, and we're at correct. Um, are you making recommendations, or is someone making recommendations, or? So in your packet, I do have options in there for you. Also in your packet, you have this PowerPoint presentation, plus you have the actual packet that I have. So. Correct, from individual organizations. And at this time, we're at 23%. So we need to drop that down to 15%. So there's a couple options we can do. We can take away, it's like 34% to make it 15%. But 
But that's all in your packet. That's all in your packet. But that's just an option that we have. But I'll let these um, gentlemen speak. Let's gentlemen speak and let everyone else here speak. Hi, I'm James Cornelson. I've coached here locally for the last 20 years. Um, bought a gym. It was going to be a youth outreach. 17 out of 27 our first summer did not have a parent at home. And uh, we've dealt with all kinds of crazy. Uh, we had the mayor and Amelia in when we, one of our parents got shot. Um, it's unreal what these kids are dealing with in this town and what they're living with. It's not like it was when we were kids and grew up here. So, so James, do, you work it with at-risk youth. Yes. We after work school with, and mm -hmm. mostly in the summer. Uh, yes, we have an after the after school program where we go and pick them up from school. James does the west or east side, and I do the west side. Don't get lost in the gym because yeah. we fish. It, fish it's and so much gym. more than a gym. 4-H farm. We try to yeah. get well-rounded kids is what it, we're trying to do. The yes. right things for the right reasons. Yes, trying to make a way for less fortunate children and families that can't normally go and do things on summer pro summertime where we can have them come and we uh, stay very active, do lots of uh, things around the city, um, the community helps. Uh, we have a little pantry, so if our uh, parents don't have food for the weekend, then they can uh, pick up uh, little odds and ends from the table as they leave, or if they don't want to go to the grocery store, there's food there. Um, and we have a little uh, thrift store, so if any of our children or anybody in the community really needs clothes, uh, we uh, have donations from the community, from uh, people that attend our programs. We have great parents that will go, summer parents. Um, so we just kind of have a little community within a community trying to help. We really have a special thing going on. We have two young men that their dad got drunk, come out of their house, the cop shot them, covered them up with a blanket, and they'll tell this story at church. Well, when they still tell that story in my gym, all of a sudden, hand comes up. Mine's in jail for drugs. Mine's in jail for a high-speed chase. By the time they get done, they look around and figure out they're over three-quarters of our room. Yes, we have a lot of uh, children that are in a single home, families, or uh, they, they get to live with their grandparents. Um, so we have a lot of different things that are going on in our uh, little gym. <laughs> like I said, it's so much more than a gym. Um, we just, we're trying to serve the community, the people who, uh, like I said, less fortunate and can't uh, go and do these things for their children or the kids live with the grandparents and grandparents don't have time or, or energy. This summer so. we had 23 paid. And when I say paid, that means some Either. of them are donations. Majority of ours are not full price. No. Sometimes they give 100 when they should be paying 150 Sometimes they don't pay at all. And we had 15 for free. So by the end of this year, or this summer, I was calling congressmen, senators. I'm like, dude, I need a state of emergency. These are kids that watch their parents try to get killed. They're homeless kids. I can't say no to this. We can't afford it. We ain't got room for it, but I can't say no. So that's what led us to this. Um, for... To be, yes, to be uh, our scholarships um, in the summer, we have 11 weeks um, all summer, the time that they're off from school. And then the other weeks when they are in school, it's 41 weeks. And so uh, for a child to uh, be able to come free, it takes $4,315. Um, and that's where a lower cost of after school program, summer help. Um, believe me, it can be a lot more than this. Uh, with this grant, we, it will help pay our, uh, our rent for the year and then be able to help four children uh, do a scholarship. I think our grant was for 16800 and that helps the four children, uh, four or five children uh, that can come for free. Which will be running about 10 or 15 for free. Yeah, but, uh, so this definitely will help us uh, keep going, being able to do activities for the children that we like to help and that people who need us. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Appreciate you guys. Oh, yes. oh yes, yeah. We're sorry. How'd you come up with 24,000? Uh, that was our original. Uh, it was going to be uh, paid the, uh, the rent for the year. That was going to be five scholarships. 
Yes. No, that, it was going to be five scholarships. That actually is going to pay our rent. Five scholarships will cover our yearly rent payment. That way we're not struggling through and worried about paying Is that uh, Watson Avenue? Is that yes. over across from the swimming yes, sir. area? Yes, the old revenue office. The old revenue office. Mm -hmm. we, we, it, was a, it was already an uh, after-school program when we bought it, and it had already run for 12 years. It turned into at-risk school when we got a hold of it. We didn't realize the need, but it found us. <laughs> uh, any, anybody else have any questions that we can answer? Please stop by yes. and let us show you what we really do. Yes. I brought creek gravels in. They look for arrowheads and, jewel, and little jewels, and we just try to keep them busy doing active stuff. Unplug and go get dirty. That's yeah. what kids are supposed to do. Yeah. Do what kids are supposed to do. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Anything? Anybody? Appreciate you all. Thank you. Which ones of these are new this year? Are there, are there any new ones? Yes. So BTX Sports is brand new. And anytime there's a brand new organization that comes in, I actually go to their place of business, I inspect, make sure that you know, the records are held up and just do a good look around and make sure that they're doing what they say they're doing. And I was over here a couple months ago and checked it out. And, and I did awesome. too, and, and I've known James his, about his whole life, but they're legit. <laughs> But all of these, usually I do, I pick one or two throughout the year, and I'll do an audit. I'll actually go there and have a discussion with them and look at their files and see how they do it and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Next is Compassion House. Is she here? Okay, so Compassion House, basically, they bring in the teenagers that are having babies they take care of them, they counsel them, and they give them all the care they need so they can graduate high school. And 80% of them do. So it's a really good program. And I've, I've been involved, well, through our church, the Compassion House, for many, many years. And they, they do an outstanding job. The most important thing, those babies are going to be born and not aborted. And, and a lot of them, without Compassion House, that would happen. Next, returning home. Nick? Yes. Dean on Compassion House. You're right. So we funded them for several years? Correct. And yes. at this level? Or yes, what we level? Have. The yes, 24000 they asked for? Yes. Is what we funded before? Yes. Typically, before we started getting so many nonprofits in, we're always at 10 or 11%, and we're able to fund them at 24000 So the last what, two years, two, three years, if we get to one of your options and decide to reduce everybody by 34%, we'd be dropping them down from what they got last year. Correct. And the same for some of these others that may be coming forward tonight. Correct. That may be asking for the same amount again. Correct. Okay. And I do have on the back of the page, I do have an example of taking down to 15% what they would get. You'll see that in your packet also. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But the ones that are asking for basically the same thing they got last year right. would be getting less, correct? Correct, correct yes. Yep. Yep. I am uh, Nick Robbins, CEO of Returning Home. Um, we've got a couple locations. We've, we've got one here in Springdale off of North Thompson where we work with men coming from prison. It has about 70 guys. Um, <clears throat> we also got a... A newer program that we started, we, it's located in Huntsville, but it's for um, men from Washington County. So we work with the judicial system. They're a uh, low-level offender, somebody that um, the judge and the prosecutor say that, hey, these individuals don't need to go to prison. They need to work on certain aspects. And to give you an idea, 78% uh, of them are homeless prior to coming to us. 89% are, are not employed before they come to us. And 56% uh, are parents. And so they send them to, these, uh, to us. We work with them for four months. Um, we get them housing. We get them jobs. Um, they do life skill classes during the day. We have a uh, therapist on site. So we go to group counseling and individual counseling. And uh, so we've been doing that program for three years. And uh, our goal was to reduce the likelihood of these individuals going to prison. And somebody that's getting out of prison, the likelihood of them going back is 60%. 
So over the last three years, our recidivism rate for the community alternative program is 4%. So we're being very successful, and we actually do it for less per day than, house, uh, than it is to house an individual on the floor in a county jail. So we're pretty efficient. Um, there is one missing piece, and that's that secondary housing. After they get through our, our structured program, uh, we're looking to build an aftercare facility that's on Harris Street. So we're in the midst of, of, of building that. And uh, the, the request, and, and the big thing is, we don't want to th thrust them back into the environment they came from, because um, most of them really don't have much to go back to, so that they would uh, live in this building, this apartment setting. We'd have 24 guys there. Uh, they still receive their weekly um, drug testing. Uh, they'd receive their counseling. They still got to work and uh, pay some program fees and stuff like that. And so the request today would be to help furnish those uh, apartments. Any questions? Sorry, I'm asking all the questions. This may be for Dean, too, but uh, on the page, funding years, FY19, FY20, FY21, CB, what, what does that all that mean? So back in 2020, we had COVID-19, and COVID-1 was our first allocation for COVID funds, and we gave that. We funded them out of a different program with CVs, correct? correct? correct. The CV FYs one. would have been CDBG money, though? Correct. Okay, yeah, so we began with this program in 2019? Correct. Okay, and reallocation means the same they asked for last year? Negative. So what happened, CV3, we were able to take all that money from CV3 and distribute it to all of them. And in doing that, HUD saw that, and they had additional funding left over. So they gave the $178,000 the reallocation to us to do the same exact thing just is to reallocate it to the nonprofits. Just to clarify and make sure I'm clear on it too, the the COVID money was on top of the regular CDBG Correct. annual. So so we had extra money and and that was also that all went to the non services, nonprofits. Correct. None of that went I to guess I'm not clear what reallocation means though. So typically what happens is most cities can't spend all their CV money. That was one of the problems. So if you didn't spend all your CV money, your COVID-19 money, mm -hmm. it went back to the government. Well, the government had a stockpile of money left over for CV, so they looked at all of the cities that spent their money wisely and said, okay, the city of Springdale spent their money wisely. We're gonna divide this money up and send it to them so they can give it to the nonprofits to spend. So, thank you, the 20,000, is that the same as the CDBG request last year? Yes. I didn't, I didn't no, you didn't. You did today um, your prior. Between 24 and 20. They weren't, they weren't part of the program in Negative. 2023? Negative. Sometimes it's yeah. Typically, I've seen um, with Nick, it's been either 23 or 24 and 20. So it just depends on what his needs is. Okay, so since uh, we haven't, you haven't participated in this program since 2021, correct, Nick? Yeah, 22. Okay. Yeah. How'd you come up with 20,000? Um, it, it was a portion of, we had some individuals donate. Uh, the total for the furnishing is $38,000, and we already have raised 18, and then this would be the And are you, you're in the building, the steel building mm -hmm. on across yes, from sir. Neal's? Yeah, that's one of our locations, yes. Is that what you're furnishing? Uh, no, no, it'll be the building we're building directly behind it. So um, Harris Street, 713, 715 Harris Street, it's right behind it, kind of by the um, Harbor Apartments. Next. All right, next will be VFW Post with Wade. Hello, Mayor Sprouse and Council Members. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, Post Commander Jeff Hill and uh, Quartermaster Jerry Holsey. They're both at this minute. I just got off the text with them meeting for dinner with Senator Bozeman, Senator Cotton, and Congressman Womack to lobby veterans' issues. We, as of two weeks from now, we will be, be, have been in our new building on Sunset Avenue for one year. It's gone crazy. We have so many veterans and non-veteran groups that want to meet at our location. We're not charging them a penny. 
they use in our building. I have to go to my list for this. Uh, Veterans Treatment Court Mentor Program, Circle of Life Hospice, Fayetteville National Cemetery, VA Hospital, uh, that, that's like a veterans group to talk about issues like the fireside chat kind of thing. Northwest Arkansas Veterans Coalition and Camp Alliance. This, this past year, we spent about $53,000. We missed last year's grant application. It was my fault because it was January 1 to February 1. I was post commander. It was crazy getting in the building and we missed it. So 2023 is not on our radar there, you can see. Um, our footprint has increased so much, it's hard to keep up with. We now have all of the Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, and Boy Scouts in Greater Springdale under our charter, Veterans of Foreign War Springdale. We're chartered in 1936 as a 501C19, which is like a C3, but military. So we've got all the Scouts, we had our biggest turnout for uh, our middle school students and our high school students for essay contests this year. Uh, Commander Michael Schuth right here read that up, or led that up, and um, we, had, we submitted some good stuff to the state. We are currently the number one, Springdale VFW is the number one Veterans of Force post in the state of Arkansas. We are currently the number three post, Springdale VFW, in the whole Southern Committee, which is 13 states. We have qualified to go All-American. If you look on my cover here, as 21-22, we're All-American post. We finished fourth in the nation. Right now, we're, we're duking it out with a, a few other posts in Florida and Texas. Uh, there's a really good one in Ohio, but we're looking at coming in fourth in the nation for a Veterans of Foreign Wars post, VFW 2952. So our footprint has gone crazy. We love it. We love having the scouts. We love having all these other nonprofits use our building. And last year we donated approximately $53,000 to needy veterans. And that was without, because of my fault, getting a CDBG grant last year. We do poppy drives, we do raffles, we do everything we can. We are zero profit. And so every single penny goes to veterans. Utility bills, buying diapers, you know, going to the grocery store, we grab, I do it all the time. We grab them by the arm and said, let's go to the Harps. Let's buy some ham, some cheese, some bread, some mustard. You know, we're not getting processed food that costs a ton of money. But anyway, we're asking for the 24,000. We understand Dean's limitations and the other nonprofits here. Anything we get is gonna be well spent and we are veteran focused 100%. Right now with our leadership in Washington, D.C., we are lobbying right now for veterans' issues. And it's so much bigger than just Springdale. But everywhere we go, nationwide, they see Springdale, Arkansas. Are there any questions? Is your name Jeffrey Hill? Was that what it was? Jeffrey Hill? The post Hill? commander is Jeffrey Hill. My name is Wade Farrington. Okay. I'm the senior vice commander. All right. Thank you, Wade. Um, I should know this, but are there other posts in Northwest Arkansas? Yes. Where are they located? Is there one in every town or? Rogers, Salem Springs. There's, we're the only one in Washington County, basically. Um, what area do you serve? Is there some sort of an area or there's well, no? Well, it's Greater Springdale. It's, uh, we, like I said, we compete with Rogers. Rogers is a good post too. The difference between, the major difference between Rogers when it comes to money is Rogers has a bar, a bar, a drinking bar. And we, when we built this new building, I was post commander, we all got together and said, no alcohol. So really? that limits our fundraising. Okay, you know, if they could buy a, a can of beer for 50 cents and sell it for $3, you know, that's profit. And where's your building? Right off Sunset, uh, right next to the Fast Signs. We moved in a year ago this month. So other nonprofits have asked to use that and use it for events or what? Constantly. And, and we actually put their logos on our website. Uh, we do take donations over Facebook and our website. Um, and we let them put their stickers on our window. So Bo's Blessings meets there. The, the cemetery meets there. Was there any specific way you came up with 24000 
at the time. That was the maximum we could ask for. We asked for the most. I, Is I mean, there any full any, transparency? Okay. And do you have it? Des if you were to get that much, you have it designated for anything specifically? Oh yeah. We um, well, part of it's going to be, of course, maintaining the building, paying electric bill, and the alarm system, that kind of stuff. But the rest, we we generally we we've got investments with swap and we do short-term CDs and three months, four months, six months and make like 5%. So generally that money goes in there and then we, we siphon it out on a vote by the post of what we spend every penny on. There are, our financial reports are down to the penny and they include utilities plus what we do to take care of veterans. We go and buy mattresses for somebody. Every bit of it is accounted for and it's always available for audit to Dean. I'm sorry I talk too much, but I get excited when I talk about this kind of stuff. Well, I've been a member of your post for over 20 years, and I know the good, the good work you do and all the stuff you do for veterans, and I thank you. We well, try. I appreciate that, sir. Any other questions? Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right, next we have community clinic. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name's Abby, I'm the community development manager at community clinic. Uh, you may be familiar with us just down the street. We've been around for over 25 years now, um, serving primary acute care, behavioral health, um, prenatal care, women's health, pediatrics, the list goes on and on. Um, today we are requesting $12,000 to fund our transportation program for Springdale residents. Um, so last year we served 45,000 individuals, 18,000, about 18 and a half thousand were Springdale residents specifically. Um, primarily served out of the clinics just down on Emma. However, we have four additional school-based health clinics here in Springdale and are gearing up to open our fifth at Central Junior High um, early this summer. Um, we do a screening on majority of our patients as they share uh, particular uh, insecurities that they might have financially uh, or otherwise. And so we are able to screen patients as they come in for transportation security issues. And that's one of our number one uh, reasons for missed appointments. Um, and many of our patients fall under the uh, federal poverty level and are struggling with multiple chronic diseases to manage. And so by missing some of those primary and acute care appointments, that means that they are not managing their, their chronic diseases well and increasing their likelihood of expensive ER visits, missing uh, work at some of our local poultry plants. So with this program, we're able to provide either a gas card or use a service called Uber Health um, to safely and HIPAA compliant transport patients from their home, from their workplace, um, and get them to their appointments and back. Um, and this year we asked for 12,000, that would fund 400 patients approximately. Can you explain the HIPAA the HIPAA part of that transportation, because yeah. that's something I never thought about, and I'd sure. like to hear more about. So, um, just by a show of hands, does everyone know what Uber is? Okay, so uh, Uber has a subsection of some of their services called Uber Health, where you sign a contract with them and only particular drivers are allowed to transport these patients, because even saying that you're a patient of community clinic is a HIPAA violation, or we said you were a patient. So it would be a HIPAA violation. So we couldn't contact Uber and say, hey, can you go pick up Doug Sprouse at his house? This is the address to just anyone through Uber. It has to be contracted and protected information. So that, that's helpful to me because, you know, as, as the council goes through these things, they're going to, I would assume, at least the way I would look at it was I'd be trying to not put the same money toward the same needs. And we do fund o ORT, but that would not fit under the, what they do would not, would not. Correct. Couldn't and be used the same way that your, 
your clients use you or transportation. Absolutely, and we try to maximize connect patients with ORT because our main clinic on Emma is on a bus stop. Um, however, when we talk about some of those satellite school-based clinics, um, it still might be more convenient for somebody to receive transportation, especially if they don't have a vehicle, can't afford gas, um, have mobility issues, things like that. All right. Thanks. All right, next we have Bread of Life. Good evening. My name is Whitney Bond. I am the Bread of Life coordinator. Uh, the Bread of Life is a food pantry in downtown Springdale. We are a mission of First United Methodist Church. Um, we have been in operation since 1992, so for 32 years we have been feeding uh, Springdale and beyond. In fact, last year we provided food for over 27,000 individuals. Um, we serve government commodities, also known as TFAP for Washington County, but anyone who does not meet those requirements, we give them our own pantry food. Um, we're open two days a week, and we also serve um, in conjunction with the Northwest Arkansas Food Bank two nights out of the month, um, and that is something that we, we started at the end of last year. But the reason why I'm here is since 2001, we have also offered financial assistance to Springdale residents in crisis situations. Um, with a proper disconnect, a uh, utility disconnect, or an eviction notice, we, uh, we speak with them, we ask them questions, we make sure uh, they meet all of our requirements, and then we disperse those funds to the utility company or the landlords. We are keeping people in their homes, we are keeping gas on, um, water running, you name it. So our CDBG grant funds uh, were needed at an unprecedented rate this past year. So in 2023 and 2024, the funds served 88 families. We've already run out of funds um, for a total of 403 total residents. Um, the cost of living is rising and the wages are not. And so we are seeing more and more people come through our doors in dire situations. Uh, families with kids, they don't have running water. The water's about to get shut off, you name it. Um, we've, we've dealt with some, some pretty catastrophic things lately. So I'm here because I want to continue to be able to serve the community in that way on top of providing food. So we actually have people uh, from the Springdale Water Department, Ozark Electric, they are sending people to us. Um, we have a rule, we, we only help financially every three years. So if, some, if we help someone in 2022, we will not be able to help them again until 2025. And usually we do our background. I mean, we, we call the landlords, we, we do the whole nine yards, and we make sure that our funds are going to keep them in the home and not just, you know, go out the window. Any questions? Thank you. All right, next will be the VFW Auxiliary. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dorothy Cardiel. I'm president of the Auxiliary, uh, along with the VFW Post 2952, where an umbrella, they're the umbrella for the Auxiliary, the auxiliary doesn't exist unless, you know, we have a post. Um, however, our organization is totally separate in the sense of our um, money accounts and what we do and how we spend our money, how we help veterans. So um, if you have any questions specifically about our program, because you've funded it now for several years, um, we developed a go-bucket program back a while when we found out that a lot of veterans that were homeless, they're assisted to get jobs, to find housing, they get into their location in an apartment, uh, they have four walls and a roof, and the federal program gives them a mattress. Um, but they don't have a towel or a can opener. So we developed a list with the caseworkers that work with the veterans for what are the most important things that they need to, to set up you know, to be able to function. A week or so ago, I got a call from a lady and her husband, a veteran, and they'd just been housed. And she said, 
I don't know, but if, do you happen to have any, you know, extra towels, you know, in your program? Because, you know, drying off with our dirty T-shirts just isn't working. Well, I then asked her who, who she was with, how she got her housing. Of course, she'd gotten it through St. Francis House, the uh, SSVF program. This is Stephen Beatty. Uh, they do the vetting of the veterans and their situation, so they refer them to me. And as soon as she said she was with them, I said, who's your caseworker? You know, I get the information. Uh, I contact the caseworker. I find out that today <laughs> he was delivering our go bucket. And she called me just a couple hours ago before I came here saying, thank you, thank you. We have bath towels. We have a can opener. We have a pot. Um, so the go buckets consist of two boxes of food, uh, a kitchen trash can with the household kitchen items, towels, cleaning items, pot, one skillet, one pot. I don't know if you've bought inexpensive pots and skillets lately yourselves, but they run anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks a piece. And they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> they're maybe worth three bucks. But anyway, the cost of things is just skyrocketed, and not, not only just with food products. Um, linens, halfway decent towels, a set of sheets, a pillow. How about one blanket? Those are the things we put in a linen basket. So they get the linen basket, the household basket, two boxes of food. Uh, the other thing we do with this money, and I did increase my ask this year, is we purchase um, certificates from HARPS for food and fuel. Sometimes we've got a homeless veteran that's living in a motel, and they're actually driving DoorDash with their baby in the car, trying to, you know, save money, waiting to get into an apartment. They need fuel. Um, so the HARP certificates have worked really well because HARPS puts on there, um, you know, they don't give them cash back. They cannot buy cigarettes and liquor. So we control how it can be spent. So we feel better about it. We know that the veterans are getting what they need. Um, with the certificates and helping those that sometimes need extra rent money or apartment fees or utilities, we go, well, in 2023, we went through over $11,000 with that piece, not even the go buckets. And the go bucket package, if we do them every other month, it's another thousand dollars, so I figure six thousand a year for that, and we're doing eleven thousand a year in the other um, area as far as utilities, motels, rent, uh, the certificates. Um, so we can easily plan on needing twenty thousand for twenty twenty four. Stephen uh, is the director of the. Um, <laughs> I knew I'd forget it. It's the uh, SSVF program through St. Francis House. Right. Uh, that stands for Supportive Services there we for go. Veteran Families. Supportive <laughs> Services for Veterans and Families. And um, I wanted him just to just tell the one story because I want you to know that we vet these vet veterans. We know what the situations are with the families and that your money is being very well spent. But we had a veteran. Um, he was got an eviction notice. Right? Yes, that was yeah. the start of it. Tell them what yeah, happened. Yeah, I can get a quick recap on that. <laughs> so, yeah, this was a recent veteran that uh, came across our radar, uh, fell behind, and he had some pretty significant mental health issues, some PTSD, uh, fell behind in his rent as a result of all that, um, and got an eviction notice. Um, and luckily, he, he found our program. We were able to get him enrolled really quick and get him caught up on his rent um, so that he could stay there. Um, and that's primarily what we can do financially is just help with housing costs uh, for veterans to get them either into housing or get them caught up to prevent them becoming homeless. Sir, I'm confused. Is that through St. Francis House or is that through the auxiliary? Uh, our program is St. Francis House, but we partner with them and they provide those goods right. to our he, veterans. He too. has access. Right that helped that veteran that you just talked about who who provided those those fun, from SSVF those funds come from the VA but the VA grant they have the federal VA grant to help veterans find housing mm -hmm. uh, so they protected this veteran by paying his back rent kept him in the house he's not living in his car he's not on the street however 
Yeah, so the issue we ran into, because as you know, with any federal grant, there's a lot of red tape and just, just limits on what we can do. So we uh, got the check for all his rental arrears, got that delivered. Thought he would be in the clear, but then we found out in talking to the property manager, they had already started the legal eviction process for this guy and, you know, hired attorneys and all that. And uh, they tacked on, I think it was around $1,100 of like attorney fees, eviction filing fees to that straight to his account. And he had no way to cover that. Our program, unfortunately, could not cover that amount. So, we, we, you know, we thought he'd be good when we paid rent and then we got that uh, surprise at the end. And so at that point, we're just in crisis mode and reached out to several organizations. Bo's Blessings and the VFW was a huge help and they were able to compile the money together. Uh, for those legal fees to keep him where he was at. So it, it was just a, a huge blessing. The right. Help they gave I us. mean, we're not just providing boxes of food. There's situations like this that come up. And, um, you know, that landlord's a Springdale landlord that filed an eviction notice, and within two weeks he had his back rents paid and still was going to hit the veteran with 1100 bucks. Yeah. And that just <clears throat> is very hard for me to swallow sometimes. Yeah. Um, so fortunately, because we network with each other and other veterans groups, we can piece it together. You know, if I've got 500, someone else has 250 or whatever, you know, we can make it happen. But the money's going multiple different ways. But uh, bottom line, um, every year, you know, if we ask for 15,000 and we get 12,000 or, you know, whatever, we always end up, it, because of the cost of things, and the way the needs pan out, it's we're always just hanging on a thread. Dorothy, so, what was your uh, request last year? You said you went up. Last year, I requested uh, 15. This year, I requested 20 because when I realized my total was over 11,000 just in the food and fuel and utilities and rents and situations like this, that in order to keep the go buckets going, you know, um, we, we need closer to 20000 to make this work, and we don't get it till later this year. I'm already putting, have to put myself on a budget right now in the sense of I can only give out an extra 500 a month between now and September. Otherwise, we're broke. So, any questions? Dorothy, I'm familiar with your organization. You all do a great job, and St. Francis does too. Both of you all do Thank great you. work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bailey. I appreciate it. I do have a copy of an application we use that um, St. Francis House uh, helps us with. In other words, if a veteran just calls me, I'll say, you know, you need to have this completed. So we have a strict system, and, and uh, Mr. Allen comes and looks at our books. And Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Our next will be um, Feed 479 by, with Dennis. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Good to be here. Uh, my name is Dennis Smiley, and I represent Feed 479. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Feed 479 was part of Compassion Center of Northwest Arkansas. We kind of changed our names around a little bit, and now it's Compassion 479. And Feed 479, of course, is our pantry and ministry arm of Compassion 479. What we do mainly is we operate a choice pantry located here on Sunset Avenue in Springdale, the old uh, Goodwill building. And um, every day we have trucks that go out and pick up retail rescue products from Walmart, uh, Neighborhood Market, Sam's Club, Dollar General, Aldi's. We do that in partnership with the Northwest Arkansas Food Bank. We bring that back to our pantry we set it up like a little grocery store where uh, families can come in and pick out fresh produce, meats, deli items, dairy items, get to shop in a very dignified and uplifting and positive manner. Uh, we're open four days a week. Uh, we also do some other programs where we have a mobile pantry and order ahead, but our, our uh, choice pantry is real, our, really our main program. Um, our, our families can come once per month. They also can come back and get a USDA distribution. So basically, they can come twice a month. Uh, last year, we served over 215,000 individuals through our pantry and through the USDA program and through other programs that we have. 
um, is growing, um, 30% increase over last year, and we're continuing to see with the population growth and with the cost of food and things that are going up to, to that it's continuing to grow. And that's why we need uh, your continued help. Our, this is an increase from last year where we asked for 15,000. Our budget on purchased food for the year is $216,000. Now we get a lot of food donated from, from those retailers and, and people that I mentioned, but we still have to purchase some food items. And so our budget of that is 216,000. Uh, Ten percent of that would be twenty-one six. I rounded that down to twenty thousand, and that is again an increase from what we asked from last year. Uh, it, a couple other things I will tell you: we do service all of Northwest Arkansas, but we're here in Springdale. Sixty-eight percent of our families reside in Springdale. Almost all of our distributions are in Springdale. In fact, next year we'll have two hundred seventy-nine actual food distributions in the city of Springdale. And we couldn't do that without your support. We appreciate your support in the past. And uh, again, just thank you for all you've done for us. Be happy to answer any questions. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of need. There sure is. Thank you. Next we have is Kendrick Fitcher, Hydration for Life. Good evening, my name is Kayla Lacavera. I'm the Executive Director at Kendrick Fincher Hydration for Life. We are requesting $6,500 to cover our heat and hydration awareness education for the students in Springdale. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story because explaining what we do can be a little tricky. So in 2020, in August of 2020, there was a student, he was 12 years old, his name was Yeshua Robinson. His mom dropped him off at school, a healthy student, uh, he went about his day, got into PE class, and forgot his tennis shoes, like all of us did when we were kids. So his teacher sent him out to run laps. Before the nonprofit world, I was a teacher, so that's perfectly normal. Go run a few laps. Remember your shoes next time. During his time running laps, he was asking for water. He asked for a break, and his teacher told him to keep running. He ended up collapsing. His teachers called 911. He, the ambulance came within five minutes, took him to the nearest hospital, and by the end of the day, he had passed away. His school was uneducated on the signs and symptoms of a heat stroke, the proper protocol of what to do when that happens, and the fact that you have to cool first before you transport the body. You have about four minutes to get their internal temperature lowered below 104. That's what we do, is we prevent tragedies like that from happening. We go into schools and work with students, coaches, athletes, and the community to teach about what proper hydration truly is, what a heat stroke is, and proper protocol. We donate water bottles to all the students when we educate them and cold immersion tubs to athletic programs so they have them in case of an emergency. We are also currently partnering with the University of Arkansas Exercise Science Department to create action plans for the high school and junior high athlete programs so similar to a tornado drill, but for in the case of a heat stroke, what should you do? And the $6,500 covers all of the elementary age, sec all of the elementary second graders in Springdale, along with um, an education program with each junior high and high school and an athletic tub for our, both high schools. Thank you. Same amount you requested last year? Last year we were requested 7,200, but we switched printers for our water bottles and were able to get a better deal this year. Actually less than, we funded 7,200 last year? Yes. So this program that you speak of was implemented in our schools last year as well, correct? Yes, so our elementary age works with second grade. Um, we've found that that's the sweet spot of they're young enough to listen and be excited, especially during the hands-on presentations but they're old enough to take the education materials home and share the information with their families. And then in the high school and middle school age, we work directly with health teachers and the athletic departments. And is the program more expensive than what you're asking for? And this just covers a certain portion of it or so will this the, cover all of it? This covers all of the Springdale schools. Yeah, so we 
our program is mainly within Benton and Washington County, but we do go outside of that. The funds we're requesting are specifically for the Springdale students. Thank you, guys. Next will be CASA of NWA. Thanks, Dean. Um, my name is Courtney Voigt. I am the Director of Development for CASA of Northwest Arkansas. Um, we, provide, we recruit, train, and support volunteer advocates for every child in the foster care system. Um, we have been here in Springdale since 1997. Um, we currently, in 2019, we were able to reach 100% of children served. Um, so that means every child that comes into the foster care system, we're able to provide a trained advocate to serve their case. Um, foster care can be very scary. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, a child's removed from the home, and they don't know what school they're going to go to tomorrow. They don't know what bed they're going to sleep in. Um, they may have a first caseworker, and another caseworker turns over. They're jumping around from foster homes, so our goal is to provide one volunteer advocate for the lifetime of that case, so they have that one person um, to rely on. And we recently, from one of our kiddos, heard having a CASA made me feel like someone was there for me, like I wasn't alone. Um, and so that's what we're doing. These advocates report to the judge, so they write court reports giving detailed history on what they've learned um, from the child, from the biological parents, from the foster parents, from teachers, from therapists, from any adult in that child's life, and then gives the judge recommendations on what does this child need to move forward and have a safe home. Uh, we are requesting $10,000 um, and this is to support that program. Um, so we're really supporting that $10,000 help support a portion of the kids that come into care from here in Springdale. Uh, this is the same amount that we requested last year. I did. Yeah, we, I mean, we could ask for more. We have a ton of need. Um, our funding is going down. Our federal funding um, continues to diminish. Um, we're looking in the next few years for it to be gone. Um, but we also know Dean only has so much money and there's so many other deserving nonprofits. So we kind of, this $10,000 would really help us stay where we're at um, while we find other funders to kind of help offset some of those other expenses that we have. Any questions? All right, thank you. Next will be NWA Continuum of Care. Good evening. My name is Debbie Martin, and I'm the executive director of the Northwest Arkansas Continuum of Care. We are a coalition of organizations and stakeholders that um, have the common goal of ending homelessness in Northwest Arkansas. My request is specifically for residents who are experiencing housing instability, homelessness in Springdale to, uh, it's a three prong request. Uh, last year, I asked for um, hotel uh, vouchers to be able to put some of our individuals who, for whatever reason, can't get to the shelters. Springdale, unfortunately, doesn't have, there's no resources here, so we would have to resource out. Um, my increase is for 16000 for this year for a three-prong approach. We realized last year with the inclement weather and how it got so very cold that um, we needed more uh, housing, emergency shelter. And Elmdale Baptist, Samaritan Church, and a whole group of people came together and blew it out of the water. And it was amazing. Their uh, biggest day was 67 people. When they came and started this, they were like, eh, we can do 30. And it ended up being 67. So part of that, part of this grant is to help them with supplies to be able to make sure that they have everything that they need going forward. Um, they, again, they did a great job, but uh, as a continuum, we want to come together and we believe in uh, partnerships and collaboration. We also want to look at outreach. We did an outreach this past year with uh, Springdale PD for our residents who are experiencing homelessness. We want to get them 
We want to get their names, their information, and either provide some type of diversion or get them on the by name list so that we can help them start that process for housing. And then that third piece would be for hotel stays. So my, my ask is an increase from last year, but we think that just with the weather and the need, there's more homeless than ever before. And I have a list that's very long for all of Northwest Arkansas. And so this is to help the residents of Springdale. Any questions? Okay. And that is it. Any questions? Well, I thank you all. So we've, <laughs> then you did the gambit, I'm telling you. Will you have the different options uh, in the packet? Is that what you said? Of Yes, sir. There's, there's a, two or three, and there are different options? Yes, sir. There's three options in your packet. Option one is detract one of the nonprofits, or two, to make it, because we've got to take about $64,000. Again, we don't know what we're getting yet, so I'm going off of last year's funding. So it's eight hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars, I think. But you, it's usually pretty accurate. It's pretty, pretty well. accurate. And you know, I'm not sure I understand the difference between one and two the options. Okay, so the first one you can take away one or two nonprofits. Correct. Correct. To get down to fifteen percent. Correct. And what's the two then? Two might be the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, this the third one is the most logical one, I think. That's drop it to get to 15%, fund everyone, and stay at 15%. That's our max. That would be reduce everybody's request by 34%. Correct. But everybody would get. Something. Correct. Again, it's just an option. Yes. So it's going to be up to the council, you know, to just try to study it and figure it out as we go. You see, there's there's not any that. Yeah, you know, they all need funded, but I know we can't give them all the money, you know, but maybe we can help out all of them. Uh, hopefully that would be my option. That's what I'll talk to you about. Right. Also, Dean, on the housing, uh, uh, tell, tell me about the housing. Where, where, where are we at in the housing? We so also at, do, we also redo houses too, so. So at this time with the moderate rehab, we're at 22 houses. We're still, we're still using um, FY22 funds. So right now we have 22 houses completed. We have three on the waiting list and we have two on contract right now. And typically our average is about $24,000 we're putting in and we've done about 10 to 15 emergencies. And that's HVAC system, that's water lines, sewer lines, anything that is deemed an emergency and an unsafe situation in the house, we go in there and fix. Dean, thank you for the work. You've done a good job. I've worked with you for the last year. You've really did a good job. Dean, um, is there a way, I don't know, I know our COVID um, money has to be dedicated or earmarked by December of 2024. Is there anything that can come from that to supplement the 70000 so that every place could get their whole amount? As of right now, HUD standards is we can use only use 15%. Now, by what was it, July timeframe, we should know by HUD what we're going to get for our FY24 funds. And that's where I'll skew the numbers to make it appropriate to what you guys want us to do. But there are no COVID money. There's, no, there's no COVID money whatsoever, no. COVID money what? No, we are completely oh. out of COVID money. Oh. Are you asking about the COVID that the city received that wasn't? That's correct. Oh, sorry. I was asking about sorry. it. She's yes. talking about the, you know, what we normally right. split into two pots, what we call regular COVID and then lost yeah. revenue. No. No, we are, we don't have any COVID money. Because we had a certain time to, to spend that COVID money. We didn't have, for instance, with the CDBG funding, we have three to five years to spend that money. Um, with COVID, we had a very, very short time or we would get into a situation where we'd be uncompliance and that's a red tag for us and we could get fined for that. Not fined, but we can get um, a finding for that. So we would have to spend the money pretty quickly. And that's why when we got the CB funds, we decided to go with all the nonprofits to help them out to get them where they're at. I see. I feel like uh, going with option one or two is going to get us in a rabbit hole that we probably never get out of. So I think option three sounds like a good 
compromise. I'm in agreement. I, I want to I want to discuss option three and the process. I know you mentioned at first that uh, there was just that one uh, BTX, I think, or BT something. Correct, BTX. <clears throat> it was the only one that's a first time request, S but several of them had missed, so they're kind of new again this year. Right. You know, so, some of them just missed last year, some of them missed a couple of years in a row, but they're right. coming back. So it's almost like we got more requests this year maybe than we've ever had, I'm guessing. This is the most we've ever had. Yeah. So, um, and it, my guess is it's going to be that way every year from That's now correct. on, probably. You That's know, correct. we're going to add another one next year, or another two next year, and it's going to keep, how many total was it this year? 11. Yeah, so it might be 12 or 13 next year. Correct. And are we just going to keep reducing our percentages every time because we get more requests? I mean, I'm not sure that's, I mean, I know that's the easy way to look at it. And because this is a hard thing to do. This is a, this is one of, I mean, it's a fulfilling thing. It's a good thing. It's something that the city council gets to do, you know, that helps people. And, but it's also a very hard thing to do, decide, uh, you know, right. to take money away from somebody. I, I can't, like the Kendrick Fincher thing, she's already dropped hers from 72 to 65. And here, you know, if we did the 34%, we'd be asking her to drop it even more. And so and I'm not sure, I don't know the answer. I'm just suggesting that maybe doing the discounting of 34% is kind of the cop out and the easy way out. Could we do a rotation? Some sort of rotation possibly where, you know, the, the ones that have used us for the most amount of years or something like that. They have to wait a year. We can add, I don't, I don't know. Well, we can come up with a new policy of how we ask for public services. Do we want to emphasize food and shelter and transportation or what, what activities do you really want to fund? Or we can say you can't have it two years in a row. Do you want us to come back with some kind of a policy guide for the next year when we go in into this with some specific ways we want to handle this so we don't get into this situation? Because now we open it up to anybody who provides direct assistance to low and moderate income families. Do we want to say only direct assistance to low and moderate if it's for housing and transportation and food and that only? Or do you want it to be any of the others or you some combination of that. I mean, we can come back with some ideas if you want to go that direction. We've always just opened it up to everybody because in the past we had enough money. Now we don't have as much money. It's easy because we had all that COVID money. Exactly. But that easy part's probably gone. And hopefully with the new census number, if we get a good number, we'll get a little bit more money than right. we... Right. That, that will help. I right. mean... But I mean, it's the, not going the to. The best way out of the hole, Jeff, is for us to get more of the money yeah. given to us. Because then our 15% produces more money. But, but I, you can't hang your hat on that. And you all don't that's know assuming when it'll that Washington, that the Congress funds HUD at the same levels they have every year. We don't know if that's going to happen. Right now, we're all operating. They're operating on continuing resolutions, and nobody knows what it's going to be. So we won't know how much money we get until all that gets settled in Washington. What I really would have preferred would have been for you and Dean and. Rex to have got together and narrow this list down so we wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> Which works really good until I leave the, we leave the one out that you wanted to fund. That's where we get into a real problem, and that's not and something that's And that would happen, I promise you. Oh, I, and, and everybody has their own passions about things that need to be done. I and they all do great work. There's no I, doubt about that. There's it, great work going on, and you haven't heard half of it. I think where we're heading, unless... Um, unless the, the pot of money grows a lot, where we're heading to, if we're going to avoid being in this situation where more very worthy nonprofits mm -hmm. come in and ask, I think your idea about possibly putting together different categories, mm -hmm. you know, let's, we, we may have to determine what's the most, what's the, what's the greatest and most urgent need. And that means, that means some really good 
some really good nonprofits that yeah. do great work and important work will get left yeah. out. But yeah. but we may have to get to where we, or else we're watering it down so much that we're really not. That's what I'm always concerned about. If you don't yeah. get enough money to really do some good, is it worth all the paperwork it takes to get the money? Because they have to report, they have to do audits, and there's I'm a sure point where you Francis get I'm sure St. Francis House could have used a lot more than twelve thousand. Oh, everybody but, could but use a lot more. They've only asked for twelve thousand. Everybody could use a lot more. We just kind well, of ar arbitrary. I can tell you why it's twenty-four thousand because when you get to twenty-five and above, the reporting requirements are a whole lot more. So everybody stays under that because. There's a lot of paperwork with any federal dollars, and that's not counting what, what Dean has to do on our end to make sure we stay in compliance with it. It's just what each one of those organizations want to, to put up with. Well, what does the with. council, what do you all need from the council tonight? Give us the timeline, because they're, they're talking about some solutions, and we may not need to be there yet. We, we, well, we need some I, time I, to, to be able to study this more and come up with a work session at, uh, I think, at the next uh, committee meeting. Do you want to try that to do that this time, or we go ahead and do the option that we... That I'd like 15. to see us do it this time. This, this, this is the first blush that we've had to time see all the What's numbers. our time requirement well, here, Well, we've got to get this together, and it has to go to HUD by May 15th. May 15th, so we don't have a lot of time. That's why well, I was we've got that. time. we've got time for another meeting to discuss well, it. But also, I mean, if we're going to do that, then I want to know, you know, what monies these groups are getting elsewhere. Are they getting money from the counties? Are they getting money from, you know, other cities? Where's that money got, you know, in order to determine, like. I don't think there's an organization that presented to you tonight that's not got multiple funding sources because they, they, they go down every avenue they can to get enough money to operate. And having to put a lot of that information together is kind of tough to do. I mean, I was suggesting that we do this with a new policy for next, for next year. year. So when we go and ask for non for public service organizations to submit an application, they know up front, these are the guidelines and this is what we're going to. So if it's not my time to do it, I don't have to spend time tracing chasing this money because there'll be another grant application somewhere else that they need to put some time on. And these things take time. This is not easy to put these things together. Is, is this the first year we ran into this? This is my first no. year. I mean, no. last year. Last year was 16%. Yeah. When we had the COVID money, it was a little bit easier. And, and you know, I, I've been doing this for many years. Most of the years we had not a lot of organizations that, have, that applied. The Northwest Arkansas is blessed with a lot of public service organizations, nonprofit, that address a lot of issues. There are just more of them out there than there used to be. really worried about the watering down effect of dropping 34 okay. percent well then the other option is to pick something you don't want to fund <laughs> okay i do Who think I, I do think next time we should pick a certain amount of silos that they mm -hmm. compete in those silos and then we give them you know that amount um, that way you're not watering it down, but you have an opportunity to apply and go through the process. So We always give them the option that this, this is not enough money to mess with. They can withdraw their application. I have yet to see that happen because whatever money you can get always helps. It, it's hard for me to go back and say, we opened it up to everybody and now we're going to decide which ones we want to fund based on some criteria when we did, didn't give that to them this year. That's why I was suggesting we put a policy together so next year in January, when we ask for applications, everybody knows this is the criteria for what we're doing. And I won't be here. Okay, then we let Rex decide who we don't find because he's not going to be here. But my, my, my position is still option three. Okay. You know, and get everybody <laughs> funded. Everybody gets funded. It may be at a lower, but I understand, Jeff, what you're saying. But, yep. you know, mine would be option three and everybody gets something. Well, I still think we need a little more time to look at it since this is well, the first time. Well, you don't have to decide time. tonight no. on which we need to have another What kind session. of meeting do you you want? Just another one of these meetings, yeah, or do you I, want a meeting by itself? Just a meeting by itself with, you know, for us to discuss. Or we could, at the next committee meeting, you know, we could come up. We have time to up, do that at the next committee meeting. And we set it up to give you time to sure. take what you heard tonight, take got, the options, and come back next time. And we've tell got us plenty of time to do. I think that'd be at, <laughs> deferred till the next committee meeting to come up with our 
are, and we're all going to come up with different combinations, and we'll have a chance to hash it out and determine what's what's There's the best There's not any chance. There won't be any new ones if we no delay, application right? process has closed. I and think we do set a deadline, or we'll just keep getting them from now on. But everybody, seen, if if we could zero in on what we want to do this year, and and uh, uh, that, that's what we're going to need to do. And, and if y'all want to cut some out this year, then you need to be able to help us. I think if we if we put that decision off until we until we put some new new criteria in place for next year. I think you're going to get a lot. You're going it, to. It's going to be seem fairer to everyone. But young discuss that. If we that. were to cut, how much would we have to cut? Right or now, about thirty-four thousand. I mean, that's right. Yeah. Thirty-four percent. Thirty-four percent from each one. Altogether. Sixty. You're going to have to cut sixty-four thousand dollars. So we're going off of last year's money. We don't know how much we're getting this year. It might be more or less. And if we when, got more money, when will we know that again? Much. We're back to 15%. I guess we take the same approach that we would add it back into those at the same percentage. If you want to do it that way, or you give us an alternate that you want to fund if there's more money, if you want to take someone out. That's how we do that. our grants at uh, Boston Mountain Solid Waste. We'll, we'll fund what we, to what we believe we're going to have, and then, if we have ec we, and then we have certain recipients that we say, okay, well, if we get extra funding, yeah. it'll go back here. Right. We could do that with this. We could decide which ones we want to fund and an alternate that if we get more money, we can add somebody else in if you wanted to do that. I guess there's right. a chance you could get less, too. And well, when do we find that Congress out? Cuts the, Has that Congress happened before? Cuts the head. It has. Dean, when do we find that out? Uh, whenever Congress knows. June, July. August, September. We'll get, a, <laughs> we'll get an email from sometimes Bo's. Senator he, Bozeman. He's very optimistic that Congress is going to get this together in time for us to yes. know on a regular time frame. They haven't made too many decisions yet, so we'll okay. see where we're So y'all want to just come back and do it again in a couple of weeks? Well, we're not going to bring everybody back again. No, 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 no. We just need to decide how we're going to. Everybody okay. here is, I think everybody's okay. very appreciative of everything every organization here does. It's just we got to figure out how to move forward. If, if, not, if not for this year, to nap, correct. Then, then for next year and how yeah. to get there. And I'll have some policies made up, some examples that we could probably use. Don't, don't make, don't make any commitments. Oh, yeah, good, good, good point. <laughs> uh, that's the end of the community block grant committee meeting. All right, we have a committee of the whole, and I'm going to let Mike take this, uh, Mike over well, because he asked. Mayor, about based, it. you know, based on an honest, productive meeting we had tonight, I think. I would, I'd rather defer this to our next committee meeting okay. so that uh, we can have a discussion because I think with this has been a real worthwhile to, uh, to really get, uh, get a sample of, of uh, what these nonprofits are doing. Is, but uh, let's defer it till the next meeting. Okay, well, that's great. Anna, did we, the, a document I've got with all of them laid out, did we give that to council yet? Why don't we, in the meantime, we can send you what currently how currently boards and commissions are appointed. Yeah. And we'll, we'll send that out to the council so y'all can study that. And now, I don't know how much of that is subject, is, is the ability for us to change, because some of it is state. Well, almost all of it is. Yeah, so, but anyway, that'll, well, that'll give y'all a good set before not, we discuss not, it. Not talking about, uh, my concern is uh, there are some of these are, that are uh, uh, controlled by the state, et cetera, but as far as informing the council, there's some other steps we can make, and that's my major concern. Not about changing wholesale all these, but in order to give us a, a chance to really know uh, more information about these people gotcha. that would like to be on these boards and commissions. Okay. All right. I, I will tell you. Well, we'll just we'll just save it then for two weeks. Yeah. I'm trying to th I'm trying to think out loud about whatever other information we could get you between now and then. As long as I'm on top of the agenda, I don't care. <laughs>